All right, next up we have functions, which are a very special kind of procedure. Um, now, you'll have heard me use functions instead of procedures and then correct myself, and at least in Visual Basic, uh, a function is a different term than a procedure because a function is a type of procedure, but not all procedures are functions. Um, however, you'll also hear a lot of people, especially working with other programming languages, just refer to every type of procedure as a function anyway. It's usually easier to um, refer to it as that, and a subprocedure would be something called a void function, but you know, we'll not worry about that so much. Regardless, for Visual Basic, this video is going to give you the real meaning of what a function actually is. And we're talking about F6.5 in this video. So function procedures is the proper name that's on their um, birth certificate or something, but they prefer to be called functions. Uh, functions are procedures that they do something called returning a value after completing. Uh, sub procedures do not do this return of value thing, but functions do. That's the thing that sets them apart. Otherwise, you know, other than this, they're almost identical to sub procedures. Okay, so I wanted to return to the square root uh, program that I made for a previous video, this one right here. And I talked a lot about this try parse thing and the returning. Well, this is what I actually am talking about by returning because try parse is actually a function. It works the same as any other type of procedure. Um, you know, you pass in arguments. Those arguments get placed into its parameters. It runs its statements based on what those parameters are and then it exits. But in this case, when it exits, it's not just exiting, it exits and it passes back a value. It returns a value to me, the person who, who called the function. And what Visual Basic does is it completely replaces this entire function call, the call to doubles method try parse, and the method happens to be a function in this case, a function that is a method. That's interesting. But it replaces this entire call. After the function has completely run, it replaces it with the value that the function gives back out. So if the user types in the number 81, uh, text num dot text, you know, the string containing 81 gets put in here. Uh, the variable gets passed by reference so that the variable can be updated. And then it returns that it was successful. It specifically returns true. And it's as if I typed true right here. However, if I, if I, I typed in blah, triparse would fail to actually convert blah to a number. So it puts zero into double num and it returns false and this whole thing evaluates to false it's as if it gets replaced by false that's what i mean by returning is that it's not um just ending like we've kind of treated it in the past as if it was just ending with no nothing given back but in reality, it's been returning a Boolean value the entire time. In this case, true if it's a number or false if it's not a number. And the nice thing is, is that, you know, other languages might have double, might have a uh, try parse return a numerical value that I would then put into double num. So I do double num equals double dot try parse tri text num dot text, right? Which would work fine when textnum.text text text has a number in it, but when it doesn't, or sorry, when it has a numerical string in it, but when it doesn't, then that would be an issue. So then it would cause some kind of error and the program would crash 
unless you specifically did something to handle that error. Sort of some in a similar way to how we handle events when the user interacts with controls or something like that. That's what other languages would do. So in those languages, try parse, their try parse equivalent would return the number and then give an error out. But because Visual Basic has this optional, like, you can choose if you're passing values by reference or by value. Sorry, passing variables by reference or, or by value. But because you can choose that, it actually allows you to have double num passed in by value, or sorry, by reference right here. And then it returns the status, whether it was actually successfully able to uh, do it or not, which means we can test for it and then abort the function right away. But yeah, that's what I mean by returning is that this whole function, you know, we say, hey, inside of the double class, look for the try parse function, which is your method, pass in these arguments and evaluate it. And then try par my, uh, you know, evaluation of this if statement would then pause while try parse was run to completion. It puts whatever value in double num, it returns the Boolean success value. And when it returns, this whole thing gets evaluated to the value true or false. Sort of like how when I have um, four plus three, this whole thing essentially, when it gets evaluated, is essentially replaced by seven. So that's what I mean by returning. It, when it's done running, when the function reaches the end, it won't be end seven in this case, but when it reaches the end, it uh, gives a value back out. And that value will be replaced. You know, when when the whole thing is evaluated, that value will be will will replace the uh, call to the function. So here's the function syntax. Instead of private sub, you do private function. Uh, you do the procedure name as normal. Uh, you put in the parameters as normal, and you still use by ref or by val for each parameter. But then the difference here, the first difference at least, is you put as data type. What this as means is exactly the same as when you say dim variable name as data type, or you do a parameter with by val variable or parameter name as data type, or by ref parameter name as data type, right? You're saying that this function is going to give back out the a uh, some value with the type data type. So that's the first thing that you do when you're defining a function. You write function instead of sub and you put as data type for the type of data that you're returning. Uh, try parse would have as boolean. If you're returning a number, you would do as integer or as double or as decimal or something like that, right? And then you have all of your statements like you normally would with your regular function, but then at the end, well, sometimes, you put return and then some expression that will eventually evaluate to some value that is the same data type that you specified in the function header. You always have to have a return statement that will be hit well, okay, you don't need, you can have multiple return statements. You can return early. You can return from inside of selection structures. You can return inside of loops. You can return uh, values that say, hey, I failed. I need to exit early. You know, if you're returning a Boolean value, right? You can return whenever you want, but no matter what happens, no matter what path through the flowchart you're code takes, there must always be a return statement. It could be one at the very end. If you're returning the same like variable or same expression that uses the same variable, no matter what happens, even if there's a whole bunch of if statements that maybe modify that variable, if you can still return that variable, you could do it at the very end. If there are special cases where maybe most if, like if 
branches uh, can return the exact same thing, but you have to return a special value inside of one of those branches. You can have inside of that special branch the one return special value statement and then everything else doesn't have a return statement and instead you put a return statement at the very end of the function so you can return early because a return statement exits a function immediately sort of like how exit sub does in the independent sub functions a return statement exits immediately it doesn't do the rest of the function it just exits and gives you back it gives you back that value but you can return early, you can return at the very end, you can return wherever you want, you can write return how many, however many times you want. Um, the first return value that is seen by the code is the return value that is used. So you shouldn't do this, but suppose you had the last two lines of your procedure were both return statements, return three and return four, three would always be returned. And usually you're going to be um, exiting a function immediately like, sorry, exiting a function early using return inside of a selection structure, sort of like what I showed off earlier with the um, exit sub when things went wrong. You could do something like that, but return false to show, hey, something went bad here. And then at the very end of your function, if everything works great and you made it to the end without returning false, you could say, hey, return true. This was beautiful. So... Yeah, that, that all is the function syntax and the return statement. The return statement is the um, is a very important part of the function because that's what makes a function a function, is that you are returning. And of course, I want to specify this again. The expression that you return, the expression inside of the return statement, is the same type as data type up here. So if you say as boolean, you are only returning booleans, you're not returning integers or anything. All right, so I'm actually looking at the same uh, concert application that we talked about in the rounding uh, part of this video, but I want to show off how um, you can use functions here. It's another way of using functions. Um, what we have is the uh, button calc underscore click. Uh, sub procedure which is doing all this stuff it's uh calculating the um it's calculating what the subtotal is using the uh actual like standard or vip check mark right here and then it uses a function to get the discount um so when you get the discount like this Oh, and also we have the use of the math.round, by the way. In this case, subtotal is rounded to two. Uh, but regardless. Uh, yes, we have the get discount function. Um, the discount is equal to the function, or sorry, is equal to the evaluation of get discount, and we're passing in int tickets and double subtotal. So we're getting the discount for a purchase of however many tickets are in here and whatever the subtotal is here. And whatever that discount is, we are returning it and passing it back into double discount. That's possible because get discount is a function. We could do this with a sub procedure by making double discount uh, as a variable and then passing that in as a third argument. Uh, by reference, and then updating it that way, but that is extremely awkward and very kind of dangerous to do. So, get discount is really nice as a function. So let's actually take a look at it. Um, get discount right here. Uh, passing in, uh, it's getting in two uh, parameters by value. Uh, int num as an integer and double before discount as a double, and it is returning a double. Uh, but we know that because of this as double right there. Um, and it actually, you know, determines what the discount is using this case statement right here. Uh, in every single case, the important value is double discount. So 
you know, we would want to return if they bought more than 10 tickets, we would want to return the uh, before discount price times 10%. Otherwise, if it, if they got more than 5, or equal to or greater than 5 tickets, we'd want to return the before discount price times 5%. Otherwise, the uh, discount is just 0. So we would, wa we would want to return 0. But by using this double discount... Um, this double discount value right here. Not value, variable. By using that and by updating the value of double discount to be all of these calculations, whether it's a 10% discount, a 5% discount, or a 0% discount, at the end of the day, we are just returning double discount. So no matter what, we're returning double discount so we can put the return statement here. Now what we could also do is say return double discount, uh, sorry, double before discount, return double before discount, return all of that. We don't even need double disc and we don't need to return down there because we have returned in all possible cases, given that we have this else right here. So we could do that, but that's three return statements. It is a little bit rough, especially if we were trying to fix get discount and we had like these three return statements right here, or if we had 20 return statements because we had 20 branches in our case statement. That would be really rough to check every single one of those. So at the very least, if we set all of these results to double discount and then return it at the very bottom and just set double discount equal to whatever of these values is correct, then that makes things a little bit easier in terms of understanding how the program is working. All right, so let's do some comparisons between using returns in a function to get values out of those functions and by using pass by reference variables, you know, updating their values in order to get values out of the procedure that doesn't actually return anything. So let's take a look at some. Functions are only able to return one value. Uh, you're only returning one thing, and that one thing is then being used in whatever calculation or set to a variable or whatever. However, with pass by reference, you're able to update any number of variables that you want to, so long as all of those, uh, you know, so, so long as all of those arguments that are passed into your procedure are variables. If that's the case, and they are all passed by reference, then you can update all of them. It doesn't matter how many there are, you are able to update all of them. So you could say that it's like returning as many values as you want, but without even having to return anything. You'd be wrong, unfortunately, but people could say that, but they would be wrong. Uh, returning, yeah, returning, you only return the one value, but that happens no matter what. Pass by reference, as long as the arguments are variables, if they're not, this whole thing falls apart, but if they all are variables, then you can update as many of them as you want. Now, when you use a function return statement, Specifically, you will not accidentally update variables. You can still accidentally update variables inside of functions with the same pass by reference stuff that I showed off before. But you're not going to be doing it through a function return. Either whoever is calling a function is going to be specifically using that value in a calculation or setting a uh, variable equal to that value. Like either they're doing that or they're just letting it go sort of like every time we've used 
try parse up until now. So you know by returning from a function, you are not accidentally updating a variable. If someone else calls your function and sets the, val sets the output equal to some variable by accident, that's on them. It's not your fault. So you have that to be grateful for, at least. However, with pass by reference, you have to be really careful when you pass by the reference, when you pass uh, by reference, because if someone does give you a variable as an argument, you might accidentally update it when you don't want to. So you have to be so careful about how you treat it. With functions, you can return values calculated from non-variable arguments, which means that if I call a function and I give it all literals, right? I still get a value back out of that. I still get information back out of that function. However, if I use a procedure that relies on pass by reference to update a variable, well, if I don't pass it a variable, if I pass it in literals or an expression or something like that, nothing gets changed. I don't get that information back out. Sort of like when I was showing off the square root program and I, uh, instead of putting in double num, I put in double num times one and then double num didn't get changed. If I wanted double num to get changed, but I did double num times one, it wouldn't get changed or double num times two or double num plus three or whatever math I wanted to do, double num would not get updated because I'm not, when I put it inside of a operation like that, I'm not passing in the variable itself anymore. I'm passing in the calculated value. So changes only get saved. You know, I, I only get information out of a pass by reference sub um, procedure. I, I only get that information back out when I pass in a variable. If I don't do that, that is a problem because I can't actually get that information out. So you're relying on your user knowing that they have to put variables in. They have to know that you're trying to pass by reference shenanigans to update their variables. They have to know that. And that may not be so clear to them if they're looking at your code. And you have to hope that they're looking at your code. Even if you put a comment there, they might not know because they might, um, they might miss it, right? They might not look at it. And if they're just seeing the, the uh, procedure header and what uh, parameters it takes, they might not know that you're expecting a variable so that you're updating it. So they might not pass that in. Functions, when you return from a function, you can return when you're... Like you can give inf information back out even if your parameters are literals, even if they're arithmetic operations. If, they, if they're variables, it, you can still do it. It doesn't really matter. And the user will know that you're returning something because they see that it's a function from the private function in the header. And also they see the type of data that you're returning out. So functions make that a lot more clear and they can actually return values from non-variable arguments. You also are able to, um, with a function, use a function's return in order to set a variable equal to a value, to update the uh, value contained inside of the variable. Uh, the variable doesn't have to be passed into the function. It can be completely external. It can never touch the argument list at all if you don't want it to. But you can set that variable equal to the output of the function. And then whenever that function is uh, evaluated, it gets replaced by the returned value, and then that returned value gets put into that variable, you know, it works perfectly. But pass by reference, you have to rely on the user passing in the variable that they want updated. So they can't, uh, pa you know, pass by reference can't touch a variable that was never passed to it as an argument. All right, and that is functions. Uh, functions are different from the sub procedures, the subroutine procedures because functions return and sub, re uh, sub procedures do not return. That is the big difference right there. That is the reason why not every procedure is a subroutine or why not every procedure is a function because subroutines, uh, sub procedures do not return and functions 
do. And that fact that functions return is extremely, extremely useful.